This is the first coaching video. We're going to look at the basics of how to incorporate this type of training into your sessions and the things you want to be thinking about with your students. First things first, you will always make sure that the technical aspects, the technique and the mechanics are absolutely perfect with your students before you move into anything else. You don't want your students to be trying things that are too heavy or just not right for them if they can't do the technical aspects first. They can't actually do the pull up correctly. You need to make sure that they're doing it correctly before they start adding weight or load or anything else into the training. There's many reasons for this, primarily injury. If they are doing it in the wrong way, if they are doing the type of movement with incorrect technique or mechanics, you're more likely to injure your students than not. And if you start to get them to put load on before they even have the pull up correct, again, it is going to move towards injury and they're not going to want to carry on. Once you have the mechanics correct with your students, so they know what they're doing, they know how to do it, now we're going to move into making sure that they understand what the goal is. The goal is got to be clear for them. All the students can have different goals or all of them can have the same goal, but the focus has to be that they need to know where they're going to. So whether that means that their goal is to manage one pull up or their goal could be to make sure that they practice the mechanics first, or their goal could be to hit a one rep max or get through their training. It can be whatever it is. But the idea is you must make sure that they understand what the goal is. What are they getting out of the training? If they don't know what they're getting out of the training and they don't know why they're doing it, then you'll probably find that the students are not going to then carry on and want to carry on doing it again and again. Now, one of the other aspects is the fact that depending on what kind of class you're teaching, obviously you could have a one-to-one -one or you could have a big, large group of people. No matter what it is, everybody is going to have a different skill level and ability level. And the idea is that you want to provide that scale. So we've been through lots of options for scales uh, in terms of technique and you want to be able to provide them with a scale that they can see and that they are able to get onto that scale and start working upwards. Now, when we provide that scale, you always want to make sure that you start from the bottom and you move up. If you start from the top, so you address, so if you have a large class and you're addressing all of the harder things first and those that are very, very um, skilled and advanced, you're going to be alienating the students that are brand new and beginners. You want to make sure that you start from the beginning, give them the, the target and tell everybody, okay, this is what you want to be doing and then scale up and you make sure that, okay, if you can do this, then you here's a new challenge. Here's something else and here's something else. You don't want to go in the reverse. Always scale up. So something to be aware of is the fact that with strength and conditioning, even though it is a very large part of uh, movement training and parkour training, it is not one that is generally enjoyed quite so much by everybody. They prefer to be moving. That's why they're doing movement training. They're you know, moving around, especially in parkour. The, the, the strength and conditioning side of things is not loved as much. Now, the fact is that strength and conditioning training generally on its own is not that fun. It is not that enjoyable compared to movement training. So as the coach, you need to be able to make it fun. And to make it fun, you have to plan. So the more you plan ahead and you come up with ideas to make strength and conditioning fun, the more you're going to find it is going to benefit your students and they are going to get more out of it. So I spoke about the goal. Everybody knows what their goal is and we're trying to make it enjoyable and fun. You also need to make sure that the student is focused. So they need to be focused on the goal and there are many ways to do this. 
So for instance, um, you can do this depending on your group. Again, it could be a single one-to-one -one or a very small, you know, two or three people, or it could be very big. There could be 30 people, 40, 50 people in your class. And, you know, you have to make sure that when they are doing the work, they're focused on what they have to do, the goal, and they're enjoying it. So, you know, there are, there are many ways of doing this and you can do it in terms of uh, time management. So give, give them time limits to accomplish something. Um, you know, you, if they've got to do some pull-ups, then, you know, you tell them that actually they've got five minutes and they've got to get as many as they can and then they get a rest and then they have another five minutes and they've got to hit at least that number again or more, you know, there, there's ways of doing, you know, at creating that challenge through time limits. Another way is, uh, this is, doesn't work all the time, but you can isolate them. So uh, a lot of the time to kind of get them more focused on what they have to do, you can isolate your students from each other and make sure that they w they're working on their own. So that there's very little time to kind of procrastinate and you know have a chat with someone else rather than being focused on what you're doing you isolate them and get them to you know focus on the goal that they have to accomplish on the flip side instead of isolating them you can have group work so again this works a lot more and a lot better when you, when you have big groups of people but having group work so a group target perhaps um, you, you could give them a time limit of 10 minutes or you know an hour say and in an hour the entire group has to accumulate a thousand pull-ups and then everybody's working together everyone can work at their own pace everybody it doesn't matter how many each person does you know some people are going to be slower some people are going to be faster but they're all going to be working together towards a common goal and this is an absolutely brilliant way of getting people focused enjoying, helping each other, having fun, but they're all looking towards a common goal. Speaking of goals, you could have individual goals. So each person might come in and they want to accomplish something. If it's smaller groups usually or single you know, individuals, you can speak to them and find out what their goals are. And if you know, you're giving them tasks that are close to those goals or actually those goals, then obviously they're going to be more motivated to try and get that and enjoy accomplishing that particular goal. Uh, on the flip side, again, the coach, you might have a particular goal that you want that person or people to accomplish. They might not know what the goals are. They just want to move or they just want to do um, some pulling or get stronger and you have a, a goal in mind and you, know, you set those, uh, those goals. There are other ways. So for instance, um, having rewards for accomplishing something and having con consequences as well so it, for not uh, accomplishing. So you, know, you have to be a little bit careful with these because obviously if you have a reward um, and they don't manage to do the thing and so they don't get the reward, um, that can be disheartening. And on the flip side, if they've worked really, really, really hard, they've worked, you know, 110%, uh, but they still don't make it, so they have to get, they have to do a consequence. Again, depending on the person, that can be, you know, that, that can affect them as well. So you have to be a little bit careful with consequences and rewards, but they can still be fun if uh, perhaps something that I do is I'll say that if, um, if you don't manage as a group, perhaps if you don't manage to do the goal, uh, you're going to get extra work. But so th this is going to motivate them to go towards the goal. But when they get to their goal, perhaps they don't do it and they have to do the consequence. Actually, the consequence is nothing. It's like one other one pull up or something like that that um, is very easy for them. So it's kind of like a relief that actually the consequence isn't something that is horrible. Um, but it's done its job to motivate them and keep them focused on that goal. Another way is clear progression paths. So if the person or students can see that uh, where they are and they can see a clear progression of what stages they have to go through to get towards a, a, a target and a goal, um, if they can see that path, then 
it's going to motivate them more because every time they come back and see that path and that progression, then they know, okay, I've got, here's the next step that I've got to take, here's the next step, the next step, and it's going to be a little bit more motivating for them to see their progression bit by bit towards that end goal. The last thing to touch on is the fact that with strength and conditioning, it actually takes uh, quite a lot of work and time to see differences in strength. And one session is not really going to see much progression at all. Unless you are doing you know, some personal training and you see that person very often and you're with them all the time and you can see their program and you can see the little wins and you can see the progression, um, it, you know, that way you can kind of see and they can see, okay, you're getting stronger. But with big groups, uh, when you see a lot of different people and they, it changes a lot, it's going to be hard to kind of keep track of any strength gain. And it's going to be down to the person, but they need to be aware that it is a long process. And it's down to making sure that they understand that it's uh, all about time and the amount of time they put into it and the amount of good quality work that they put into it. So if they put a lot of time and a good quality work into it, then they're going to start seeing changes. But within one session, one or two sessions, um, there's not going to be a huge difference and there's you know, going to have to be something that you've got to manage uh, for them. So as a student, you've got to make sure that uh, they're not disheartened by seeing no difference. So a lot of things covered there. Uh, make sure that out of all of it, you focus on the first thing, which was make sure your students do everything correctly and make sure that the technical aspects, the mechanics are absolutely perfect before you start adding weights or increasing any of the stress, you want to make sure they're doing it correctly.